Hey kids, if you've ever been Black Friday shopping or visited the Diablo subreddit recently, chances are you've encountered mass hysteria at some point. Mass hysteria is known medically as mass psychogenic illness, or MPI for short. It's basically just when a bunch of people start acting a fool for no discernible reason other than maybe a stressful environment. Being that this sort of thing is naturally very noticeable, there's loads of documented cases found all throughout history. Let's take a look at a few. This first one is what made me make this video in the first place. So one day sometime in the Middle Ages, a group of nuns in a French convent were enjoying a quiet, uneventful day, until one of them decided to start meowing. You know, like a cat. You'd think this would last all of four seconds before another nun was like, Excuse me, Sister Gertrude, would you kindly cut the shit? But instead, another nun joined in, and another, until basically the entire nunnery was exchanging mouths like a group of communist trading card enthusiasts. This wasn't just a one-time thing either, it basically became integrated into their way of life. It's said that on a given day, they would stand there meowing in each other's faces for hours at a time. Could you imagine being the first outsider to witness this? You might laugh now, but as they say, everybody gangsta till the nuns start meowing. I'd void my bowels and move to Malaysia without even thinking. Miles more terrifying than this pile of garbage. As you can imagine though, after a while it stopped being scary and just got annoying, leading to the neighbors calling in a band of soldiers to deal with the situation. Hey guys, can we talk to you for a sec about uh... Yeah, yeah that. Uh, all due respect, but we have orders to literally beat the hell out of you with whips till you start acting like people again. Sorry sir, it's just force of habit. Haha, <laughs> habit. Seriously though, we would rather go to hell for throttling a gaggle of nuns than put up with another minute of your bullshit, caprese. Our next event took place in the parish of Fatima, Portugal in the year 1917. It all started with three shepherd children, ages 10, 9, and 7 respectively. They were like, greetings fellow Portugueseites. Uh, we've been seeing visions of the Virgin Mary, and she told us to tell you that some real crazy shit's gonna go down in the sky on October 13th. Now, if three random farm children started spouting out prophecies to the public today, you'd say, ha, huh, what tomfoolery. Go play in some dirt, you dirty little dirt baby. But keep in mind, the past is a different country. And Portugal's a different country. So that's like, different country squared you gotta think about. Plus this was during World War I, a time where a lot of people were holding out for a miracle to begin with. So the kid's story was actually picked up and even spread by local newspapers, to the point where, when the day finally came, at least 30,000 people gathered in Fatima to witness the alleged miracle. Lo and behold, on that day, the sun began zooming around, careening towards Earth and sending rays of multicolored light cascading across the sky, creating a light show like nobody's ever seen scene. Keep in mind, this happened in the 20th century, way after the era where belief in divine jiggery and or pokery was considered mandatory, so naturally there were plenty of skeptics and non-believers present, and even they saw it all happen. Or so they thought. How do we know the sun didn't really whiz around haphazardly that day, hmm? Well, number one, use your frickin' brain. And number two, accounts differed wildly from person to person. While some say the sun zigged hither, others say it zagged thither. And others still said it shined a brilliant yellow and stayed perfectly still. As such, it was eventually concluded that the event was just a combination of MPI and weird eye stuff from too much sun staring. Although I'd like to believe it was real, just that Jesus' illusion skill was way higher than his alteration at the time. Yep, that's it. Sam's going to hell. Why, for blasphemy? <laughs> Trust me, that was the least offensive part of that joke. Our next tale took place in 1962 in Tanganyika, which was basically just the beta version of Tanzania. The nation had just declared its independence from Britain the previous year, and with the future so uncertain, tensions were naturally running high around this time. One little girl in a Tanganyikan school ended up handling the stress in a bit of an unusual way. Rather than overeating or staring at her ceiling for hours like a normal person, she just started laughing and laughing and laughing. Pretty soon, her classmates at the all-girls school she attended began to join in, to the point where 95 of the 159 students caught the gigglies, which lasted anywhere from a few hours to 16 days straight. Beyond just the unprovoked cackling, other odd behavior included aimless running and occasional violence. The problem got so severe that the school was forced to close down temporarily, leading to the chortlers roaming the streets, spreading the affliction further. Thousands of people from all strata came to be affected, with 13 additional schools being shut down in the progress. Over the course of the hysteria, several other symptoms began to present themselves as well, ranging from obvious ones such as breathing problems, fainting, random screaming, to more anomalous things like rashes. Despite all 
all this, no physical cause could be found, leaving MPI as the only explanation. The epidemic finally died down after between 6 and 18 months of day-in, day-out laughter, depending on the village. While this whole thing likely sucked for most people involved, it probably could have been worse. A lot of the time when I'm alone, I'll think to myself, man, if I ever go full schizo, I hope I'm one of the laughy ones, not one of the screamy ones. With this story in mind, just maybe, if I put my mind to it and believe hard enough, I can be both. Flashback to the year 1518 to the city of Strasbourg, at the time part of the HRE. A woman named Mrs. Trophy began fervently dancing in the streets for no discernible reason, for hours, then days. All without music, of course. Her only breaks consisted of occasional food intake and passing out from exhaustion when night came. If you saw that today, you'd just be like, ha! Huh drugs. But apparently people found it pretty inspiring, because within a week, 34 others had joined in, and after a month, there were around 400. This wasn't your casual bobbing up and down, neither. This shit made Zumba look like Tai Chi. Here's the best modern day simulation I could find. <laughs> Now imagine that both of those people were the same person, and you got the dancing plague. This would take a toll on any healthy person, let alone a medieval city dweller. But despite bleeding feet and aching bones, they just kept going. In fact, they went so hard for so long that a good portion straight up fucking died from cardiac arrest. It got to the point where around 15 dancers were kicking the bucket every day before the city decided they had to do something about it. They managed to rule out any divine or supernatural causes, which was necessary just because, you know, back in medieval times, it was fucking stupid. They eventually surmised that it was a natural disease caused by too much hot blood as per that whole four humors thing that was popular at the time. As for a cure, their prescription was, get this, more dancing. I can see where they were coming from, it's pretty sound logic, if you got a song stuck in your head, you play it till you're sick of it, same kind of thing. But here's where they goofed. The authorities actually went out of their way to facilitate the dancing, setting up a big stage area and even hiring musicians to keep the afflicted moving. All this achieved was attracting more passerby who were like, man, mass psychogenic illness looks frickin' epic, let's get in on that, causing the contagion to become even more widespread. Seeing that their solution backfired, the city then went the other way and completely banned any public dancing. Those who still showed signs of the mania were subsequently carted off to the Shrine of St. Vitus, where an exorcism-like ritual was performed on them. This ended up being highly effective, presumably for no other reason than that the dancers believed it would work, and after nearly two months, the plague was quelled. While this whole thing was most likely a case of good old-fashioned MPI, some historians believe it might have been egged on in part by ergotism, a state of psychosis brought on by eating tainted bread, which I talked a little bit about in this video. Ding. And hey, while I'm shilling for my channel, I might as well give a shout out to another as well. Today's video is sponsored by Cheddar, a network focused on producing fascinating content covering topics like technology, products, businesses, and the like through the lens of innovation. Here's one about desire paths, you know, like those lines of dead grass from people taking more convenient routes to places. It's one of those things that plenty of us have thought about but never actually explored in depth like this video. Cheddar's full of intriguing stuff like that, I highly recommend giving them a look. If you're more science oriented, they still got you covered with their Cheddar Explorer series. This one's all about how it can be sure if a species is really extinct or not. They talk a bit about animals we thought were gone that suddenly reappeared out of nowhere. Super interesting, go check it out. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Salmonella and thank you for watching.